Are you able to see the slides? Yes. And the main slide, not the whole body, right? Uh, just the first one, the main. Thanks. Let me start the uh, next session, introduction to the project. Uh, can the online participants just confirm one more time that you can hear and see me? Yeah. You can also see the slides. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so welcome again, uh, everybody. Uh, I think this morning, the amount of participation in the opening session uh, and diversity of the organizations that actually joined us uh, was really kind of a, a determinant of uh, the uh, distribution, diversity, and uh, participation of all the local agencies that really worked uh, toward this project. I'll try to keep my, se uh, my session short to give more time to uh, Pragya, the consultant that has worked uh, on this project, uh, to give you a bit more um, substantive information about some of the findings and work that has been done. But I just wanted to walk you through uh, a few steps of this project and uh, what really uh, happened throughout uh, the work. So this was a two years uh, project from 2022 uh, to 2024 under SDG, a joint find a collaboration between uh, SCAP, UNDP from uh, United Nations uh, with national, uh, international, uh, and local participants uh, to uh, towards a strengthening risk and resilience uh, in Maldives. Uh, now, um, a few of the very kind of brief highlights of the project, and again, uh, in the next sessions today, you're going to go uh, and uh, dive deeper into uh, the uh, details of uh, this aspect. Some of the highlights of the projects where uh, in terms of bringing global agenda for climate change and disaster risk reduction into a local context uh, and uh, connect the science and policy, uh, bringing more technology into really the aspect of climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. Through this project, we use global uh, risk scenarios uh, to try to see uh, what are the impacts, expected impacts uh, for Maldives in terms of uh, climate change uh, and try to uh, improve uh, and enhance uh, the uh, special, uh, special scales uh, of the data that we had available um, and uh, improve the quality of the risk information uh, that uh, was produced up to this point for Maldives. We try to identify the most uh, vulnerable uh, pertinent uh, sectors, populations in Maldives uh, that were in need of uh, some uh, more kind of detailed work 
uh, and provide information uh, for those groups. Uh, throughout our work, we updated uh, our findings, our methodologies based on the uh, stakeholder feedbacks and try to make it as much uh, as possible uh, suitable for the needs of the uh, country. And we try to uh, enhance the accessibility to the data, uh, both the data that was available through you know, compiling them uh, and uh, pulling them all together, and then through the Risk and Resilient Portal that allows uh, free open access uh, to all of the tools as well as the data that was produced in this project. Um, in terms of the outcomes of the project, there were really two uh, deliverables that uh, needs to be mentioned. So one aspect was related to um, data on uh, land use, land cover, and uh, providing uh, the national uh, and subnational institution and communities, uh, especially at risk populations, uh, with better uh, tools and techniques uh, to develop their land use uh, um, uh, planning and development planning uh, to be more sus uh, sustainable and um, suitable for climate change and disaster impacts that are happening. Um, the other aspects, uh, so for this, we had like really two uh, kind of a, a sub output or uh, some work uh, that we delivered. One was customizing uh, operational tools and data for land use planning um, and um, natural resource mapping. And the second aspect was uh, related to enhancing the capacity uh, of meteorological services uh, in collaboration with them uh, to basically provide uh, better services for early warning for all um, related activities. And Monsoon Forum that uh, the uh, Honorable uh, State Minister mentioned was one of the important aspects uh, in that uh, outcome uh, to kind of try to uh, work together and improve the quality of the Monsoon Forum uh, and information that was shared through uh, that uh, forum. Uh, the other aspects uh, goes a little bit more, uh, I would say, uh, macro level. So from looking at the tools and services uh, to uh, look at development and planning, we really wanted to provide gender responsive, uh, equity oriented uh, planning tools uh, and services and make sure that uh, they are uh, straightened uh, for the national and subnational use. So not just for land use planning necessary, but in different aspects of development, try to see what are the projections that we see, what are the data that are available, and then try to really connect them with the work that has been done in Maldives uh, and try to make sure that it's going to be a sustainable uh, work in long run, considering the changes that we are going to be expecting uh, in the country. Um, and uh, in that front, uh, basically one of the important aspects was to bring in gender responsive tools um, into the planning. So uh, it was both in terms of uh, ensuring to uh, listen to the voice of uh, women, vulnerable groups uh, in our discussions and also provide some disaggregated data on population for uh, women to allow for more uh, kind of concentrated work uh, related uh, to this aspect. If you really want to think about uh, in terms of uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals and connection to this project, I'm not going to go over all of the uh, SDG goals that are related to this project because if you really think about, I mean, the aspect of climate change and uh, whatever that really helps with uh, straightening uh, climate change agile adaptation, it goes under all 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. But if we really think about the direct impact, um, SDG one, uh, no poverty, so uh, making uh, the uh, at-risk population uh, more uh, resilient. Uh, SDG 5 uh, for uh, gender equality, uh, with involving women in the process of policy and technical expertise, and also uh, including them in our uh, basically estimations and calculations. Uh, this project can have a direct impact on SDG 5. In terms of sustainable cities, I think uh, the name just uh, comes, you know, with the uh, concept uh, since it helps with uh, climate uh, resilience. Uh, cities if we do the right type of planning and uh, land use mapping uh, for Maldives. 
uh, climate action, the project is, you know, by nature a part of the climate action, both in terms of uh, resilient building for uh, disaster, in terms of uh, climate change adop uh, adoptions, and in terms of bringing the information into uh, national policy and ensure that basically the work, the policies that we are uh, developing are going to be suitable uh, with the changes that are happening. And finally, in terms of uh, SDG 16, a strong institutions, uh, with access to the data, open access to the data, uh, we can ensure that there is more participation from different communities uh, in different levels in terms of decision making for development, for advancement in the country. So there is a direct linkage uh, with SDG 16 as well. Um, now, this is a collaboration, uh, and I want to, I, I think I mentioned it at the very first session, but I want to just once more thank every institution in Maldives that has helped us uh, one way or another uh, to develop this project, uh, create our, uh, or collect our data, identify the gaps, uh, and make the work really move forward, especially uh, National Disaster Management Authorities and Maldives Meteorological Service. Um, I've brought some of the names that came, you know, to my mind when I was going through the uh, project, thinking about all of the agencies that helped us, local government authority to really connect us with the communities, local councils, atoll councils, island councils. They had uh, a lot of good feedbacks uh, moving forward in the project. Uh, Land Survey Authority providing data, uh, Ministry of Environment in so many different ways, really providing feedback data for this project. Uh, Ministry of Housing, uh, uh, which uh, I, I think the name has changed, but at the time uh, from different uh, bodies of the ministry, uh, the help and assistance that was done to this project and many, many more. Uh, again, like uh, I, I hope I'm not missing too many important agencies. We had a lot of collaboration suggestions from UN agencies, uh, UNDRR, uh, UN Environment, uh, the RC office uh, was strongly involved in this project. UNDP, of course, I didn't mention uh, directly because they are a part of the uh, uh, project implementation. Um, and Maldives National University, a very, very big thank for uh, the support that they uh, provided, uh, especially in this final uh, stages of the project. Before coming here, we had some capacity building in other uh, campuses uh, for, uh, from my uh, National University in Kuldufushi and Gaon. And uh, it was really, really nice for me to see uh, the support, both in terms of participation in the events and giving their voice from the managers of the campuses and in terms of arrangement and logistic support that was done uh, during the event. Um, so in terms of timeline, again, this is like looking a little bit too long, but I just wanted to walk you through the steps of the project and I'll try to be as fast as possible. We started uh, this project in 2022. It was supposed to finish by the January 2024 because of some changes that happened in the methodology, uh, some delays in collection of the data, some uh, pause that we had in uh, November uh, forward for the capacity building uh, and uh, those factors. Uh, there was an extension for the project. So the final result of the project is going to be out by March 2024. So end of this uh, two months from now, basically. Uh, we um, started the scoping uh, and kind of identifying the plans that we had. And then around uh, in 2022, around July, the recruitment of the, uh, stake, uh, the consultants uh, started with the international consultants and the national partners that we had uh, helped us both from uh, National Disaster Management Authority and the Maldives Meteorological Services to uh, recruit some national consultant to help with this project. Uh, the methodology, uh, data identification collection work has started. We had our very first uh, stakeholder consultation uh, in October uh, 2022. Uh, there we provided the first findings that we had from the project uh, and uh, all of the data that we had created. Uh, we talked with a lot of different, uh, basically, uh, national stakeholders. And we got some feedback about the project, including uh, requests on some more data or some more aspects that could be found from the data. For example, critical infrastructure, or there was a request related to uh, land reclaim to see what are the uh, reclaim islands uh, in the past uh, few years 
kind of look at the pattern of development in the country. Um, and then uh, there was uh, a request to downscale our data because we were using models uh, that really uh, looked at um, regional level projections so the scale was quite high uh, and sometimes the uh, it was like 100 kilometers square so it would cover like several islands in just one uh, basically unit of uh, projection so uh, that was uh, there was some collaboration going on with the epiplad institution uh, which actually the head is uh, here with us today and we'll uh, have a session uh, later tomorrow uh, on how the downscaling uh, works and also on some of the portals that they have have in terms of risk projection in higher level. Uh, so please join the session uh, if you're interested in the topic. Um, and then uh, we brought that uh, basically downscale information into our analysis. Uh, we updated all of the information methodology approach added the data that was uh, requested and it took some time and then around May uh, we uh, came with the second round of uh, review so we had a midterm review as well as uh, some focus group discussion at the time to talk more with the communities uh, both uh, to have some more gender perspective as well as some detail from the uh, ground up on how they basically uh, disaster risk uh, reduction, planning, land use planning, and other aspects in Maldives works. Um, and uh, from that point on, we also had uh, the very first uh, prototype of the Risky and Resilient Portal, uh, and we did some capacity building on the first version, uh, got some feedback. And around the same time, uh, the work that we were doing with uh, Maldives Meteorological Service, we had the very first uh, collaboration for Monsoon Forum uh, in uh, partnership with uh, MMS as well as uh, RIMES. Uh, to basically uh, have uh, a new session. Uh, so one interesting thing that I can actually recognize several faces from these pictures here, which is really nice. And I thank you for uh, your continuous support for the project. Um, after that, uh, we realized that one of the aspects that uh, might be an issue in Maldives is the uh, technical capacity. So there are a lot of agencies that use the data, but unless they are specifically mandated by, uh, you know, to use like uh, specific techniques, GIS techniques and such, they might not have the skill to really use uh, the basics of the data. So to help with that, we had one session, online session on uh, QG. GIS, uh, Geographic Information System and QGIS software, which is an open software. Um, and uh, the one of the uh, manual that uh, I shared today was actually uh, in response uh, to that workshop. Uh, it was created to allow uh, partners to be able to uh, use the QGIS themselves uh, the very first steps. So if any type of work uh, needs to be done, you have to kind of have that basic in terms of GIS if it's a technical work. Uh, and after that, we had another session of um, technical, more advanced technical session on use of uh, basically doing uh, climate change disaster risk analysis uh, using data and applications, again, uh, on the basics of QGIS and uh, following the first workshop. Um, and we had a quite good participation in this workshop as well. Uh, it helped the participant uh, to be equipped with uh, skills to find, upload, create, and use maps through GIS. And one of the examples of this workshop that uh, kind of con was the continuous uh, UNDP acceleration lab, some of the partners that uh, were working with them from local councils were using this information to actually create some uh, subnational uh, level uh, maps from their own islands uh, after this uh, workshop uh, to add it to the layers of the information that was available for them. Um, after that, uh, we had uh, the uh, basically more advanced uh, levels of uh, preparation of the portal, integrating all the information into the portal. Because again, if you don't have that national cap, uh, that technical capacity to use uh, the data directly, then uh, there's this question about the concept of inclusivity. And we want to make sure that everybody in every level is actually able to use the data that was created with this uh, project. So so risk and resilient portal was uh, one of the aspects that was uh, developed specifically for Maldives. There's a Maldives page and uh, later on uh, some of my colleagues 
are going to have a long presentation about the portal, uh, but it provides the tools, all of the data that was created through this project, uh, through, uh, you know, open access of online resources. So you can just go to Chrome, um, get access to this uh, portal and use the data, use the tools uh, and learn how to kind of uh, do some uh, planning based on the information that is available there. Um, we also try to ensure that uh, basically the portal is available through different uh, agencies. So right now we are in the process of uh, integrating the portal uh, with uh, Maldives Meteorological Service, uh, with NDMA and uh, Maldives National University. And in terms of the data, uh, the actual data for more technical use, if any agency is interested in using this data that was created uh, in the project. Uh, most of it is open data, but they're all collected on the same uh, basically platform, and there are some data like elevation data uh, that uh, were purchased throughout this, uh, through this project, and it will provide really good information for uh, topics such as, uh, you know, flooding or sea level, uh, sea level rise and such uh, moving forward. So this data is going to be available uh, through National Disaster, uh, Disaster Management Authority, Maldives Meteorological Service, and uh, Maldives National University, I think through the geospatial lab. So uh, we are in the process to talk with colleagues to see how it can be uh, accessed by uh, others. Um, throughout this project, we try to ensure, you know, the aspect of sustainability is important. So we've been trying to develop some manuals to allow locals, even if we are not there, uh, are able to learn some of these skills, techniques, and then uh, use them. So uh, in that regard, there's been a few knowledge products. So you already saw the printed version of these knowledge products. If you want, you can just scan the QR code uh, and get access to the manual. So the first one is uh, basics of geographic information system and QGIS software. So it's uh, basically aiming to enhance the knowledge of the basic terminologies basic information for um, use of geospatial data uh, and use of QGIS. So it starts from the very basics of um, how to install the software all the way to the you know, basics of the uh, tools that are available on the software. The second manual uh, that has been also finalized and printed, should I leave this one a little bit more for anybody who wants to scan it. Uh, and we'll share the slides later on uh, in the event page of the uh, website as well, uh, on SCAP website, so anybody interested can go and uh, use the links. If you also go to SCAP uh, South Southwest Asia office uh, webpage, you can see the uh, first two manual uh, are already published uh, for use. Uh, and we are going to be adding some data to the same page. Uh, to allow uh, more basically interactive use of the manual. So when you're going to um, learn the steps, you can actually use the Maldives data sample data to practice with uh, the uh, manual as well. So the second one is uh, a bit more technical related to uh, impact-based forecasting. So operationaliz uh, operationalizing impact-based forecasting and uh, warning systems uh, for Maldives, it looks at different type of methodologies uh, that are available, some of the good practices and such. Uh, and again, uh, the link for the finalized version of this uh, manual is available. The third one, which uh, you can get access, uh, so this is not on the website uh, yet, uh, so if you are interested, you can uh, scan the link. Uh, this is the draft version. Again, we are waiting for the user review to make sure that everybody is uh, comfortable using the manual and we don't need to add any more information. Uh, but this is a step-by-step -step guidance on um, climate risk assessment, uh, climate projection uh, information, uh, and some of the geospatial technologies. So uh, we are trying to allow uh, basically beginner operators to learn how to uh, use the maps, create the maps, uh, find the exposure uh, and uh, such information. Uh, so for those that want to use the data directly uh, in a more advanced way, this is a really good manual. And uh, it's planned to, you can see at the top, it's planned to be published in February. 
And the final manual, which uh, I would say actually is one of the most important manuals in this uh, set, and you're going to be using it uh, today, uh, or rather uh, tomorrow a little bit as well, is the Risk and Resilient Portal Manual, which is a step-by-step -step manual to use the tools that are uh, developed and produced uh, in the portal. Now, this manual uh, right now is available in English, uh, but after finalization in the next week or two, we are going to move to translation of the manual in uh, the Wikid language as well, uh, because we are hoping to uh, provide some uh, more uh, accessible ways for the communities to use the portal. So we are hoping that this manual is going to actually allow that uh, connection between, uh, you know, this information data that is in English and local community so that they can use it in their even day-to-day -day life if they want to make decision about uh, any aspect that they have, whether it's business, whether it's development planning for their uh, house or something, or in higher level in um, community, in uh, councils, in national level, uh, on and on. Um, so this is also a prototype. So one thing that I would request everybody in this room, if you can download this manual, uh, when you're working with the portal, when Pragya is walking you through the portal today and tomorrow, maybe just look at the manual in the next few days, look at the manual. If you think anything is missing, uh, because you know we've been using the portal a lot, so we added all the information that was necessary from our perspective to be able to comfortably use the portal, but still from someone who starts new, uh, there might be aspects that we are missing. So we want to make sure that this is a comprehensive set. So if you have any feedbacks of the steps or information that you cannot find in the manual, please get in touch with me and provide your feedback so that we can create and uh, produce a good quality product that would be used for uh, the local use as well. Everybody who wanted to scan, scan the link. Um, and after production of this information, we've been having a new series of capacity buildings, including today. So as I mentioned, we had some uh, capacity buildings in Gong, Kuldufushi, uh, and this is the third one from this series. So those were more targeted uh, toward the local communities, participants, uh, first respondents, any of the uh, agencies that were active in those uh, atolls or uh, islands. And uh, again, I was really happy to see the uh, kind of diversity of the participation. Um, and it brings kind of the importance of the issues of climate change, as uh, we had from several guests mentioning the issues of the floods that have been happening recently that's uh, basically um, non frequent uh, or rather non-predictable uh, situations that are uh, going on in Maldives uh, is a little bit alarming. And looking at the kind of pattern of climate change, I think everybody is wondering like what can be done, what we need to do to make it uh, more sustainable, uh, better. And these are some of the kind of uh, pictures from the capacity building that was done in this uh, island so far. Um, and uh, after all of these activities are done, we are going to produce one more document. Uh, the cover is not here yet, uh, and that's going to be published by uh, the end of March. Uh, and that document is concentrated on uh, the risk profile of Maldives, so providing uh, basically uh, ground information of the whole project from the methodology to uh, the findings and projections that are relevant for the use of uh, the agencies that are working on these topics. Um, and just some of the aspects of the way forward, uh, again, I think it's going to be discussed in much more detail uh, related to this uh, project, but we are in the process of this uh, discussion with different agencies on dissemination of the data in national, subnational level to ensure that their access, the connection is there. So from the local agencies, others uh, are able to actually get in touch, uh, request the data if they want to use the data in a more technical capacity for their use. Uh, or if they want to build on top of the data. Uh, we are hoping to have more training on the Risk and Resilient Portal through MNU, through uh, NDMA, uh, and hopefully in the DV language to provide more uh, inclusivity for the local communities uh, to be a complementary factor to the uh, portal and the manual in the language as well. 
uh, we are hoping to assist our partners that have been involved in this project or are interested uh, to think about ways that they can actually use the data uh, for an, uh, basically a sustainable approach for DRR and CCA. Uh, and we are also in the process of developing some innovative tools uh, to, again, help uh, more kind of use from the portal, such as mobile-friendly uh, version of the portal, since uh, one of the feedback we got from all this was a lot of people are more interested in using their phone uh, rather than using laptops in uh, communities. So it would make it easier for them to at least interact with the portal to some extent and get the information. Uh, and also uh, providing some options that allows uh, uploading the data in private mode uh, for the local councils, uh, agencies, if they have additional data that they want to compare with the projection, with the elevation, with other information on the portal, uh, to be able to make uh, further uh, work. One of the examples that uh, I didn't bring here, but uh, to, uh, today, actually, uh, one of my colleagues uh, is going to present uh, is uh, work that we are doing with uh, Maldives Meteorological Service to bring some of the weather information from the available stations in Maldives into the portal as well, integrate the work to kind of make it more uh, inclusive of the, the available data. Um, and just adding that uh, the result of the data is going to be integrated into early warning for all initiative uh, that is ongoing. And we have colleagues from UNDRR and other agencies, national institutions that are going to be talking about uh, that project more. Uh, it's going to be used in uh, loss and damage fund for slow onset uh, disasters uh, coming forward, uh, which is uh, some of the initiatives is ongoing with uh, UNDP. Uh, and uh, it's also going to be used in some of the disaster risk reduction plans that are ongoing by um, NDMA. So these are just some of the uh, sample of the ways forward, but you can think of all the ways that you can actually use the data after getting to know the portal and the information that was created more. And hopefully the next discussions in the coming days would provide you with more opportunities to uh, learn more about how you can interact with the data and use it for your own advantage uh, in terms of climate change adaptation, disaster risk reduction, and sustainable development. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you for your time. If you have any questions. Online or in person? Yes. Uh, so the question is about the elevation data. I'm going to leave it to my colleague, uh, Ms. Pragya Gupta. She's the international consultant involved from the beginning of the project. We've been to Maldives back and forth a few times for this work, and she's been uh, doing all of the technical aspect of the work. Uh, so just to kind of give you a picture of the next few sessions, uh, we are going to start with uh, Pragya providing some overall details about the findings of the project. Uh, so I already answered the question. <laughs> it was about the elevation. Uh, so she's going to give some detail. You're providing information about the elevation data, right? Yeah. Well, yes. Well, yes. What, what is the data sharing arrangement for other sources of data between existing in the country and more and more? And if they are yeah, so the two ways to access the data like elevation, either you can access it through the risk and resilient portal if you don't want to work the, you know, with QGIS or ArcGIS, or you can get in touch with uh, NDMA or MMS, depending on which one you are having a, uh, you know, more frequent partnership with. They're going to be having access to all of this data, so they can provide the data to all of the uh, partners, agencies, communities, councils, anybody who's interested. Yes, yes. For elevation, everything that is in the uh, current version of the portal, it has all of the uh, data that are re uh, relevant to the project. Now, one thing I want to mention, when you're, uh, if you access the portal through your phone, 
uh, when you get the link, you actually go to the phone version of the portal. So that might not be perfect because it's the prototype. But again, you are more than welcome to provide your feedbacks about your experience. And like if you see any specific glitch or anything that seems kind of inconvenient, you can let us know. So in the development stage, we can actually work on those aspects and uh, make the quality of the uh, mobile version better as well. Um, any other question? Online participants? Okay, so I'll hand over the floor to uh, Ms. Gupta to start discussing about uh, the findings of the project and some of the uh, other aspects of the work. Um, yes. Key finding is slide, right? Oh, so there is a question, would you be including these uh, manuals in the Google link? Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, I can include the link to the manuals in the Google link uh, because they are directly published. Uh, so the published ones are directly available uh, on our website and the unpublished ones, uh, that I can, I can uh, uh, I, I'll prov provide all of the links for uh, online and in-person participants so you can get access to all of the manuals. 